Welcome back, Accounting Boffins. You with Ashraf Patel and Acid Disposal. Yes. Now, remember what we said. We said when we're dealing with Acid Disposal, when we're dealing with Acid Disposal, what is very important for us to take into consideration is the fact that Acid Disposal, we said, is an interim nominal account. Right? We're recapping an important feature of the asset disposal account. It's an interim nominal account that is drawn up to determine the profit or loss and sale of asset. And once we've done that, it then self-destructs, it closes, and the profit is then transferred to a profit on sale of, uh, it's transferred to a profit on sale of asset account or a loss on sale of asset account, depending on whether the selling price was greater than the carrying value or whether the selling price was less than the carrying value. Okay, so now, how will we look at the, the asset disposal in terms of the accounting equation? Here we go, watch. Step number one, debit depreciation, credit accumulated depreciation, watch. Your assets are decreasing because accumulated depreciation is a negative asset and your owner's equity is decreasing because your expense account decreases the owner's equity. Liabilities remain unchanged. Look at your asset disposal. This is the cost price. You debit asset disposal, credit the vehicles. Watch, you're removing the asset from the asset account so assets will decrease and your owner's equity will decrease in terms of the asset disposal component. Now we come to accumulated depreciation. By debiting accumulated depreciation and crediting asset disposal, watch what happens. You are debiting, your, your, your asset is increasing. Why is that? When you decrease your negative asset, you are increasing your asset. There the asset is increasing and your owner's equity is increasing because it's, you are crediting your uh, asset disposal account. So you look at asset disposal, treat it as a nominal account. When you're debiting, it decreases the owner's equity. When you're crediting, it increases the owner's equity. Right, here's the asset that's being sold. Clearly you can see debtor's control is an asset increasing your assets. Asset disposal, you're crediting your owner's equity, therefore plus. Now watch what happens at the end, and that's the important part. Because there was a loss on sale of asset in this particular example here, you find that your owner's equity will increase and decrease by that amount. So what, is, what has happened? Your, your, your asset disposal account closes off and you are debiting a loss on sale of asset account, meaning you've made a loss on the disposal of that particular asset. So this is with regards to the accounting equation. Now. A very other, uh, another important calculation that learners often are challenged with is how do we do the depreciation calculation? I want you to separate it into three parts. Number one, sold. Number two, unsold. And number three, new. Always keep these three depreciation entries separate. Let me illustrate by means of an example. Here's the information that we have. Depreciation is at 20% per annum on the diminishing or the reducing balance method, right? It's from January the 1st to the 31st of December. That's your financial year. Beginning of the year, you have vehicles valued at 520,000. The accumulated depreciation is 200,000. The new vehicle that was purchased was on, on the 1st of October 2020 was 600,000. The vehicle sold, the cost of it on the 30th of June was 100,000. And the accumulated depreciation of the vehicle that we sold was 80,000. Right, step number one, let's do the sold asset. What do we do? Because it's a diminishing balance method, we take the cost price of 100 minus the 80 will give me 20,000, right? That's my carrying value. What do I now do? Amount, remember the art, the story about art, amount, rate, and time. Take your 20,000, the rate is 20 over 100, 
times 6 over 12. What will that give you? Clearly you can see. Let's do that. 20,000 times 20% is equal to that. Times 6 divided by 12 will give you a figure of 2,000 Rand. So that was a depreciation on my sold asset. So step number one, I've done my sold asset. Number two, unsold. Very important. Because we are using the diminishing balance method, you will always use two brackets, the cost price bracket and the accumulated depreciation bracket. Got that? Because it's a diminishing balance method, use two brackets. Step number one, take the value of your assets at the beginning of the year. 520,000. Here we go. 520,000 minus the 100,000 that we sold. Let's do that with the red. There's the sold one. Can you see? So you take the 520,000 minus the sold 100,000 will give you a value of 420,000 in terms of the first bracket. Second bracket, opening balance. Let's find it. Accumulated depreciation, opening balance, 200,000. Here we go. Take the 200,000. There's my 200,000 minus the accumulated depreciation. Now be absolutely spot on with this one here. It is the value of your accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the financial year. In other words, the asset that you dispose of, this one here, it is that figure that you wanted, the 80,000. Here we can see it, minus the 80,000 will give you a figure of 120,000. So what have we done? That is my accumulated depreciation bracket. Because it's a diminishing balance method, we use two brackets, the cost price and the accumulated depreciation. So now, 420 minus 120 will give you your carrying value of your unsold vehicles or the asset at 300,000 Rand. Take art into consideration, amount 300,000, rate 20 over 100 times, we had the, the, the asset for the entire year, 12 over 12. Let's do that calculation. Here we go, 300,000, um, is it 300,000? Yes, times the 20%, okay? And obviously I said 12 over 12 is one, so obviously your, your answer won't change there. It is 60,000. But get into the habit of using the time component in your calculation, even if it's 12 over 12. Okay, so what's the 60,000? It's your depreciation on your unsold asset. Right, so you've got two components worked out already. What have you got? You've got your, we've got the, the new asset now. We were told that we bought a new asset. Let's see if we have the information. Here we go. A new vehicle was purchased on the 1st of October, 2020. There it is for 600,000 Rand. So what are we going to do with it? We're now going to calculate the new asset. 600,000 Rand minus zero. Why is that? My method of depreciation is the diminishing balance method. The new asset was bought this year. Obviously, it has no accumulated. However, I'm showing you that you're still subtracting zero because it has no accumulated. It is a brand new asset bought this year. Therefore, 600,000 minus zero will give you 600,000 as your amount. Your rate is 20 over 100 your time when it was bought. So in this financial year, we use, it was bought in October. So October, November, December, we used it for three months, three over 12. Let's do that calculation. So it's 600,000, right? Times your 20% will give you that. Divide by, uh, times three, divide by 12. And your answer is 30,000 Rand. Okay, so here we go. There's my 30,000 Rand. So now, what components do I have for my depreciation? One, the sold 2,000 Rand, right? The unsold 60,000 Rand. The new 
30,000 Rand. This is your total depreciation figure that will appear in your statement of comprehensive income under the expense depreciation, we will say depreciation is made up of the 2,000 Rand, one, 60,000 Rand plus a 30, so my total will be 92,000 Rand. Can you see that? So what have you done? You've now worked out the depreciation on all your assets in the business, right? So this is the final figure that you need for your statement of comprehensive income is your 92,000 Rand worth of depreciation. So what do we remember? One, the following steps must always be taken into consideration when we are working out the asset that we are selling. Step number one, calculate the depreciation. Remember, we said amount, rate, and time. So this will be the pro rata depreciation for the time that we have used the asset before we dispose of it. Right, step number one. There we go. Number two, transfer the cost of the asset to the asset disposal account. Okay, so step number two, let, let's do it with the entries as well. While we're doing the steps, let's do the entries as well. The first one, calculate the depreciation, debit depreciation and imputed expense, credit accumulated depreciation, your negative asset. Number two, transfer the cost price, debit asset disposal, credit the vehicles or the asset account to remove it from the asset account. So you're debiting asset disposal, which is an interim nominal account. When you debit it, treat it as an expense. When you credit it, treat it as an income. Three, transfer the accumulated depreciation into the asset disposal account. What's my double entry? Debit accumulated depreciation. You want to reduce the accumulated depreciation. You want to take it out of that account. Debit accumulated depreciation. Negative asset decreasing, therefore debited to accumulated depreciation. Credit the asset disposal. You're removing it and transferring it into the asset disposal account. Clearly you can see the entry is debit accumulated depreciation credit asset disposal. Right, step number four. Calculate or, or, or determine the selling price of the asset. We know we've dealt with this at length. We can sell for cash, we can sell on credit, we can trade it in, the owner can take it, we can donate it, it can be an insurance claim. In each of the cases, you'll debit the respective account depending on how you sold it. In each case, you will credit the asset disposal account with the selling price. The detail would be how you dispose it. Bank, cash, credit, debtors control, trade in, creditors control, and so forth. You will then complete the selling price. Once again, keep this in mind that if you are trading in the vehicle or the asset, it's a debit to creditors control because obviously you are selling that vehicle or that asset to the dealer. Now you work out the final step, the profit or a loss. What do we know here? If my selling price is greater than my carrying value, I'm gonna get a profit. If my selling price is less than my carrying value, I'm gonna get a loss. And if my selling price is equal to my carrying value, there's no profit or no loss. All right, now remember, there are two things that you need in your statement of comprehensive income. You basically need two figures. What do you need? Either the profit or loss on the asset, on the sale of the asset, and the second one, the, comp the second important component is your depreciation on the assets that you have worked on for the year. Okay, guys, so you can clearly see now, I'm sure you can't wait to get your hands on an activity to try and work out a question on asset disposal because you've seen a completely new way how to deal with an asset disposal. And I'm sure that energy is now you. You're ready to use it to work out past papers and to ensure that you ace this type of question in an activity, in, an, in the classroom, or in an exam, 
or any, in, 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 any case, in any condition where you are faced with a question and asset disposal. Remember, the two most important things is you want a profit or loss on sale of asset, and you also need the depreciation figure that needs to go to your income statement. From me, Ashraf Patel and the crew, guys, we've worked very hard for you. We want you to now practice, practice, practice. Aim for the moon, and perchance, if you don't get there, you'll be an accounting star, Ashraf's accounting star. Until next time, goodbye.